Okay, so hi, hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Okay, good afternoon, too. So maybe we'll just wait one or two more minutes for the others. So while waiting, uh, do you guys have a question regarding with our uh, last discussion? Or any concerns with the activity or with the case studies? None, sir. Okay. So, who attended the uh, webinar? Just a while ago, this 1 p.m. to 4 p.m., the machine learning. Just give me a thumbs up if you were able to attend it. Okay, Mr. Izo, Ms. Magai, Ms. Elika. Okay. So three, three from this class. So I don't know uh, with the others who are not here yet. But at least there are some. Because uh, uh, some of you might uh, have a class at that time, so that's maybe the reason why uh, the others wasn't able to uh, attend the webinar. Well, anyway, okay, so it's already 4.16. So uh, I think uh, we have to start now since it's already quite late. But don't you guys worry, this will be finished uh, right away. This one is actually uh, quick to understand. Uh, as far as I know, you guys already have an idea what is the cloud computing. Okay, so let's start now. So let me just check if you guys are already ready. So again, just give me a thumbs up. Okay, so very good. Most of you are already uh, ready. Okay, so first, what is cloud computing? So cloud computing is the delivery of on-demand computing services over the internet on a uh, pay-as-you-go basis. So to make it simple, if you're using a cloud storage, let's say, uh, of course, uh, there are some cloud storage wherein they will give you five gigabyte for free, 10 gigabyte for free. So you don't have to pay anything for that. But beyond that, let's say you want to avail more, uh, let's say 10 more gigabytes, 20 more gigabytes, then you have to pay that, uh, uh, storage already okay that capacity of storage okay but basically when we see cloud computing okay it's not just a small storage we're not talking about 10 gigabyte we're not talking about 50 gigabyte so uh it's almost like uh like you know a not a, a normal computer like uh it could be the, the, the minimum could be 200 gigabyte okay so like you can run a separate operating system with that uh, cloud storage so that's possible okay you can run your application in there uh, via virtual machines. So of course, you're going to store a lot of application in there. You're going to use a lot of their capacity storage, their, uh, uh, let's see, a server's uh, uh, internet speed, server's, uh, uh, let's say, processor. Okay, it's, of course, it's not just a simple processor. It is a super fast processor. Okay, the RAM, everything. Okay, it's like a normal uh, computer also. Okay, but in here, okay, the faster that you go, Okay, and then the bigger the capacity that you're going to avail, of course, uh, the bigger that you're going to pay. Okay, so that's basically cloud computing. Okay, so here's the uh, definition. Okay, so cloud computing is a standard in the field of computation. So the systems are uh, large numbers that are connected in public and uh, private networks. So the one that we are using, like for example, the uh, Microsoft Word, uh, Google Drive, uh, Google Sheets, uh, those are public networks, okay, we're in that anybody can access that one, okay, as long as you have the correct IP, correct URL, correct application, or correct uh, platform that you can uh, use with that certain application, okay, but when you say private, so it's very obvious, so a few people only will be able to access that specific network or that specific uh, application since it's private, okay, so we, we also have the other one, which is a combination of public and private, so it is a, a cloud computing server wherein it has a public uh, application or public uh, 
APIs that you can access uh, anywhere. And we also have the private uh, side of that one, wherein specific people only can access that one. Okay. So the reason behind using cloud computing uh, is to provide an infrastructure for applications. Number one is application. Okay. Like, for example, Google Chrome. So that's already an example of uh, with the use of uh, cloud computing. Okay. Using uh, the Google Chrome, you can access the YouTube. So that's uh, a third party application wherein, uh, of course, uh, let's say the storages okay, or the data is being stored into a certain uh, cloud storage. Okay. So you can access it one as long as you have the internet. Okay. That's the advantage of having a uh, cloud storage or cloud computing. Okay. So that should be dynamically scalable and that have been used for storing data and files. Okay. So the invention of cloud computing has reduced the cost. Uh, to a much extent, and along with it, it reduces time required for application hosting, content storage, and then delivery. Okay, why? Well, since you know those are big companies, we're, we're talking about uh, hundreds of gigabytes of uh, speed, okay, not just a normal uh, processor, so it could be the latest processor. Okay, well, actually, I, I heard that uh, they are using a special processor wherein it's not, uh, you know. Uh, being used by a uh, normal uh, consumer. Like, for example, you can uh, have the latest. I think the latest one right now is i9. Okay, so uh, I'm not uh, that familiar anymore when it comes to uh, the uh, latest versions of uh, AMD and Intel. But let's say that you have the latest, okay? Well, in big companies like uh, Amazon, um, Google, uh, Google Cloud, uh, what else? Uh, Microsoft Azure. So they're using a a uh, hybrid version of motherboard, hybrid version of uh, a processor, okay? So it's a lot faster than you can think because it's servicing many peoples and many uh, companies, okay? So yeah, you can just uh, choose the speed that you want, okay? To, let's say this is the only speed that you need, then you can avail that one, okay? But if, uh, let's say, uh, it needs more speed, then you can customize it wherein you can avail an upgraded speed of your uh, server. Let's see the upload speed and then the download speed. Okay. So yeah, that's basically it. That's why uh, it's being reduced uh, the cost since you don't need to buy that physical computer anymore for uh, that to serve you. Okay. So you can just avail that one into a certain uh, company, let's say Amazon, Google, or Microsoft. Okay. So they're the one who's going to uh, do it for you. Okay. So physical versus cloud storage, so uh, we have a lot of uh, advantages and disadvantages. So it's also your own preferences uh, depending on which one you prefer. But uh, in my case, I prefer both, okay? So I still need a uh, local storage or physical storage like flash drive, external hard drives, and then my hard drives, okay? But if it's a uh, project base, like you need to implement that, uh, let's say website or that file into e a certain group, then this one is super reliable, okay? Because if, you know, you're always carrying a flash drive or a external hard drive, I think it's a hassle from time to time that you need to put it in and then, uh, you know, pass it to your uh, uh, other group mates. So just save it uh, via cloud so that they can, you know, uh, access that if uh, they, they also have the internet. Okay, so that's the advantage of having uh, a cloud storage. But of course, if the internet is down, then they won't be able to access that one uh, remotely. So I think they can still uh, access that one uh, locally. So if you're uh, connected in one network, but if it's uh, in a far place wherein there is no other connection than the internet, then you won't be able to uh, access that one. Okay. All right. So as you guys can see, uh, this man doesn't saying that uh, I choose this one or this man doesn't saying it choose this one. So it's completely up to you. So it is you who's going to decide uh, where you're going to be uh, happy, okay? Which one you're going to choose. But just an advice, if we're talking about projects, okay? Like for example, uh, you, uh, you're, you're saving your projects in a certain storage. So why not use GitLab okay, or GitHub? Those are examples of uh, cloud storage uh, services. Right? In, other people can access that one as long as they have the, uh, or they, they are accessible or they can access that specific uh, root file of yours, okay? So why cloud computing? So there's a lot of reasons why you need to choose cloud computing, but here are some, okay, that you can 
uh, think of, okay, or that uh, they can say that, you know, this is the advantage, this is the etc, uh, etc, et so on and so forth. But yeah, let's see that uh, this is the reality. Okay, on premise, of course, uh, higher pay, uh, less scal uh, scalability. Okay, so uh, let's see, uh, you're just a, uh, what do you call this one? Uh, small businesses. So we could actually consider that, uh, you know, uh, let's see, one building is still a small business. Okay, like for example, maybe a C3AAA, okay, Chongsan maybe. So we could still consider that one a, a, as, as a small uh, uh, business because it can uh, still manage in a, a single building, okay. But of course, implementing a, uh, let's see, a local storage on that one is already super expensive, okay, because uh, every minute it can accumulate maybe gigabytes of data, okay. So uh, let's say the... Uh, uh, products that you are uh, going to list in there, okay. Let's see the uh, files of your employees. Uh, what else? Uh, the applications that uh, is being used by your employees, okay, or the uh, uh, videos that is being saved to the uh, CCTV cameras, okay. So you need a lot of uh, storage regarding with that one, okay. So of course, uh, higher the pay, but still less scalability. Okay, but in here, pay what you use, okay? So it says you scale up, of course, you have to pay more. But scale down, then you have to pay less. And like in here, uh, uh, if you have so much of storage, but you're not uh, maximizing them, then you paid more than uh, what you're using, okay? And like in here, uh, you're paying what you're using, okay? So that's uh, actually the main advantage of cloud computing. You can choose to uh, scale up and then scale down anytime, okay? So, and in here, uh, a lot, huge space for servers. So basically, maybe it will accommodate you one floor, okay? Maybe or two rooms or three rooms if it's a, uh, like, like for example, a uh, one building like uh, Chongsan, okay? And in here, of course, you don't need uh, space for that server since we're talking about uh, cloud storage, okay? So the physical storage can be found on that, uh, let's say, uh, for example, I'm, I'm not sure where is the Amazon uh, storage is uh, a location right now, but let's just say that uh, it's in Florida, okay? So of course they have their own uh, buildings, they have their own uh, spaces for their servers. So they're the one who's going to do that for us, okay? So physical servers, it's uh, up to them. So for us, we're just uh, uploading and then downloading the data. Okay. And then in here, appoint a team for hardware and software. So considering that one, of course, they have the, uh, let's say, MIS department, okay, or the information uh, technology department or IT department. So you have to pay uh, those people, of course. Okay. And then the hardware that they are going to use, let's say, the, uh, the laptops, the terminals, uh, uh, the pieces or whatever uh, hardware that you go you're going to uh, buy for them okay so uh yeah those are the things that you might want to consider if you are going to you know uh, have your own uh, local storage okay but in here so no experts required for hardware and software maintenance why because it is now the company itself is going to maintain uh, the software for you. They're the one that's going to update it for you. They're the one that's going to update the hardware for you. Okay, you don't need to think uh, any of it. Okay, as long as you're paying monthly or yearly, then uh, everything will be fine. Okay, and then in here we have poor data security. Well, this one is, uh, uh, you know, uh, we have a lot of factors regarding with this one. This one depends on the ID department. Okay, this one also depends on the people. Uh, who's accessing this, uh, this one, see uh, the employees, uh, the owner, okay, so uh, we don't know, we, we don't know who might uh, uh, get sabotaged your, uh, or the security of your data, but yeah, that's uh, basically what's happening, so of course you have, you have to hire a uh, expert, uh, let's see, ex, uh, an IT which is expert when, when it comes to cyber security, okay, in uh, protecting your uh, data, Etc. Etc. Okay, but in here we have a better data security. Why? Number one, of course, uh, they hire a lot of uh, genius uh, computer engineering, information technologies, computer sciences. Okay, to 
uh, secure their data. Okay, so they have a lot of layers. Like for example, they have maybe three, uh, three layers before you can access their data. Okay, so you have to decrypt those. You have to uh, see uh, what is really happening upon uh, this transaction from this to this, here to there, and so on and so forth. But unlike here, as long as you know uh, someone who has a grudge to your uh, company or to someone's boss might sabotage the entire data of your company. Okay, so who knows, even uh, that the uh, IT person or IT guy might sabotage or sell your information to the other uh, people. But in here, you have no one to blame. It's, it's, it's now all about the company, okay? So if someone were able to hack this company, let's see, uh, Amazon, okay, then just means that they have a poor uh, uh, cyber, well, this one cyber, uh, cyber, I'll do Mm, I forget the term, but uh, someone who's uh, managing uh, the uh, security of uh, your company, okay, especially uh, when it comes to uh, uh, software, okay, or uh, dito, not physical, okay, the the, uh, the data that's being stored into uh, the uh, their uh, local storage, okay, and then the last one here is last chance of data recovery. Well. Uh, this one is uh, also optional. So there are some uh, external hard drives wherein we can easily retrieve the data that's being deleted. So with the use of application, so you can also do that one, okay? And in here, it's of course in 100% disaster recovery since we're talking about cloud computing. So if you're going to upload your file, so it already it is already creating a lot of copy, like maybe two, or three or four copies just to make sure that your data is safe just in case if this server uh, was get hacked or was get uh, corrupted or was uh, get caught on a fire okay so of course they have their backups okay and then mostly uh, that backup is separated into that uh, camp, uh, that uh, specific place so let's say they have their servers in Florida and if this one is down they still have their backup let's say in New York okay which is a separate uh, physical uh, building okay so that's most likely the case when it comes to uh, our data in cloud uh, storage okay all right so uh, I did a lot of talk so do you guys have a question so far questions or None, sir. Okay. None, sir. okay can you guys follow so far with how I explain things Yes, sir. Okay, so hopefully yes, uh, you guys can really follow since uh, these are just my own, uh, you know, research we're in. Uh, I read that this is the scenario, etc., etc., and, and then I'm just uh, sharing it to you guys. Okay, like I'm just telling a story. Anyway, so here's more uh, advantages versus e on-premise versus e cloud computing. So lack of flexibility and then high flexibility. Okay, so it's I think it's very obvious since uh, this one can be changed anytime since this one is just a software wherein we are accessing. Unlike if you have uh, this, uh, oops, if you have this, uh, let's see, a specific server that you bought, okay, uh, if you want to upgrade, then you have to buy a new uh, uh, a new uh, server or a new uh, hardware. Unlike in here, they are the ones going to do that one for you, okay? So no automatic updates. So if it's not supported by the company anymore, that, that uh, the one that you bought, okay, that physical hardware, then uh, that's already it. And like in here, there's always an automatic software updates, okay? As long as you're paying, okay, then they'll give you uh, the latest update of their software. Okay, they always do this one for the uh, security purposes. And then last, uh, less collaboration, but in here, teams can collaborate from widespread uh, locations, okay? So when we see collaboration, so it is now the team, okay, who managed this one. So in here, you're only limited to your employees whom you hired, okay. So if the limitation of your employee is just that, then you cannot do anything about it anymore unless you, you let them uh, attend some webinars, maybe you let them uh, study more, you know, to, to enhance their knowledge regarding uh, with the uh, security of your data. But in here, so teams can collaborate. So we're talking about, uh, you know, uh, software engineers, uh, big peoples from uh, different 
uh, uh, let's say companies is going to contribute is to enhance the uh, let's say the uh, technology of that certain company. Okay, so yeah, just imagine that one since we're talking about big companies, so they always have uh, meetings, collaborations, and how to improve their uh, services uh, with their uh, products. Okay. So data cannot be accessed remotely. So yes, uh, this is true, especially if it's in just one building, okay? Well, you can do it at one, but of course, you are now like trying to uh, share that one via cloud storage. So that is not possible unless you have a long wire, okay? Or long cable wherein uh, other buildings can access the data of this building, okay? So we're talking about without the use of the internet. Okay, so that's what we mean by uh, data cannot be accessed remotely. But in uh, in here, as long as you have the internet, then you can access that one anywhere, okay, and then uh, anytime that you want, okay. And then takes longer uh, implementation time, well, of course. So aside from uh, buying it, okay, and then uh, setting it up, and then you have you have to hire people who's uh, knowledgeable in. Uh, setting up a server okay so yeah there's a lot of things that you need uh, you need to consider when it comes to implementing uh, this uh, physical storage okay but unlike in cloud computing just maybe read some documentations just read some or watch some tutorials you will already learn on how to use your uh, services that they are offering okay so yeah it's a rapid implementation so just click click just type type and then you're done Okay, just pay, of course, of course, yeah, you also have to pay. After paying, then you already have the services that you have uh, just available, okay? So basically, on-premise is a no-no, and then cloud computing is a yes-yes, okay? So here are the types of cloud computing. So uh, let's start with the deployment model first on the left side. So as I have mentioned a while ago, we have public cloud, okay? And the hybrid cloud, which is a combination of private and then public. And then lastly is a private cloud. And then here are the services that we are offering. Okay, so we have three types for that one or three layers. So we have the ES or infrastructure as a service, or we have the uh, PaaS or the uh, platform as a service, and then uh, SaaS as a software as a service. Okay, so we'll discuss them one by one on the uh, following slides. But before that, let's talk about uh, this deployment model. So uh, this is the best uh, scenario that I can show to you guys when it comes to, you know, what is public cloud, what is private cloud, what is hybrid cloud. So let's start with public cloud. So let's just say that it is a bus, so it is accessible to everyone as long as, you know, uh, you can uh, see that bus and then you can, uh, what do you call para in English, you can ask to stop that bus, okay? So you can avail that bus already, okay? But in private cloud, okay, so we're talking about private, so you have to own a car, okay? Well, of course, since it's private, you're the only one who can use it. So, of course, uh, it is a lot comfortable than using a bus uh, cloud since, you know, this one is much more safer, okay, since you're the only one who can access it. And like this one, uh, there are other people who can access, who can intercept, who can uh, see what you're doing since you are in public cloud. Okay, private, uh, everything that you do, uh, it's private. Okay, it's owned by a single person only. Okay, but in taxi, okay, so it's like, uh, uh, you know, having the uh, privilege of having the private cloud. And at the same time, okay, uh, you won't be able, you won't, uh, you're not going to spend a lot of money. Okay, so uh, let's just say that yes, this is seven pesos. Uh, let's say, uh, yeah, seven pesos per fare. Okay, but owning a car, uh, you have to buy your diesel. And then of course, at the same time, you have to own a car. You have to buy your car, your own car. Okay, so this is a, a big investment. Okay, and then for a taxi, so you can have a private uh, a feeling, okay, but of course, you're just going to pay five more times. Okay, like for example, in this one right here is seven pesos. Uh, maybe 10 more times, let's see, 10 more times. So in here, you're going to pay 70 uh, pesos, okay? 
So if you guys are going to uh, think about it, this is the best way for you to be able to, you know, have the maximum, uh, let's say, features, okay, of a certain cloud, okay? So in a public cloud, so you're using it, let's say, for free, but uh, your data is not safe. Private cloud, yes. Uh, it's like having your own local storage, your own physical storage. But of course, you have to buy your own physical storage, okay? And then if, let's say, uh, you bought a 128 gigabyte storage, but you're not uh, using the, let's see, 30 gigabyte or 40 gigabyte of it, then you're just wasting your money, okay? So in short, you won't, uh, you're not maximizing the money that you have uh, spent on this uh, private cloud. But on the hybrid cloud, okay, so you can have the feeling of having a, you know, a safe, okay, and then at the same time, you, you are able to save a lot of money, okay? So renting a private taxi. Okay, anyway, so yeah, that's basically it when it comes to deployment, uh, de de uh, deploying a model, okay? So it's up to you which one you're going to choose. So let's start with public cloud again. So the cloud infrastructure is made up available uh, to the general public over the internet and is owned by a cloud provider. Like for example, uh, that cloud provider is maybe AWS, Microsoft Azure, okay, or uh, this another cloud uh, services or cloud provider. Okay, so I forget this one, but I think this is the IBM Blue Cloud. But yeah, this is the AWS, the Amazon Web Service. And then this one is a Microsoft Azure. And then I think this one is the IBM Cloud. And then the other one is South uh, Sun Cloud, okay? So yeah, those are the uh, services that we can avail when it comes to public cloud. And then here's the private cloud, okay? So uh, the number one that uh, the private cloud can offer is the security, okay? Since you're the only one who's using that one, then, or you can, you're the only one who can access that specific cloud, then uh, your data is 100% uh, secured. Maybe not 100%, let's say 99.9% secured, okay? So the cloud infrastructure is exclusively operated by a single organization. So it could be one company only, okay? One big company wherein admins can only access this one. So this one is ideal for, uh, let's say, developers. So uh, if uh, they are the kind of people who always, uh, you know, implement uh, uh, their data uh, via online and then they need a secure uh, storage or cloud storage, then this one is uh, the choice for them, okay? So it can be managed by uh, the organization or a third party and may exist on premise or off premise, like for example, AWS or VMware, okay? So the last one is hybrid cloud. Again, it's the combination of both public and private cloud. So this is ideal for governments, okay? So if you're a company where in uh, uh, you're uh, concerned when it comes to security, then this is a go-go for you. But if, if it's a public, okay, public uh, organization like uh, DepEd maybe, okay, so uh, they can use hybrid cloud, okay? Because some information is uh, is being shared, okay? Let's see, data sets, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Uh, in general public, like for example, your website, it can be accessed by uh, anyone as long as you know the website, okay? So they can do this one using a public cloud with a combination of a private cloud, okay? So they can, uh, let's say limit, Okay, the things that the user can uh, access, okay, with the help of this private cloud. So this is actually a best idea also for big companies. However, uh, if it's not for commercial, like uh, uh, only the employees will, uh, who's going to access that one, then there's no need for public cloud. This will just, you know, uh, give you a risk when it comes to data security. However, this one is still safe, you know, but since we're talking about public, so uh, different people can access it. So there's still a chance, okay? So let's say 80% uh, secured and like a private cloud, uh, only the admins or three or four people only can access that one. Then let's say 99.9% .9 safe, okay? So that's uh, a number that I can give to you guys when it comes to uh, data security, okay? 
So also the use of public goods to share these sets with general public or other government departments. Okay, so this is ideal uh, ideal for government uh, departments. Okay, because they use private and public uh, computing at the same time. Okay, so were you guys able to follow so far? So you guys have a question up to this point? Hello? None, sir. None, sir. None, sir. Okay, great. So let's now move on to the right side. So we are, I mean, they are offering, okay, three uh, models or three services model. So the first one is EAS or the infrastructure as a service. So if your business needs a virtual machine or for infrastructure as a service, so this is a, a good choice for you. Okay, like for example, uh, your, your uh, uh, say business is using a Google Workspace, say, or Dropbox, or Salesforce, or Cisco WebEx, or Compare, or GoToMeeting, then ES is a, a good choice for you. Okay, and if your company requires a platform for building a software or product, so this is not the one that I'm, I'm talking about for in developers. Uh, will be using this one as their server okay, to implement their certain application or their uh, software, then PaaS is a good choice, okay? platform as a server. Uh, as a server. So uh, examples of this is AWS Elastic Beanstalk, Windows Azure, Heroku, Force.com, Google App Engine, uh, Apache Stratos, or OpenShift. Okay, so those are uh, uh, the applications uh, that we can use when it comes to a platform or you know implementing or updating a platform as a service. The last one is the SaaS. So if your business doesn't want to maintain any IT equipment, which is, uh, I would say that uh, most of the people uh, use this one, okay, SaaS. So if your business doesn't want to maintain any IT equipment, then choose software as a service. Okay, so example of this one is DigitalOcean. Uh, Linode, Rackspace, Amazon Web Services, uh, Cisco Metapod, uh, Microsoft Azure, Google Compute Engine, or GCE. So this is a, a go-go for you, okay? So uh, let me just give you guys a scenario, okay? So if you're into simulations, then go for ES. Okay? If, it if it requires a, uh, a lot of uh, simulations, then this is a go-go for you. If your company is more on developing things, okay, then go for pass. And if your company is just a normal company, okay, so we're talking about, uh, let's say, um, Microsoft Word, you know, uh, if, when I say SaaS, because they are, uh, they're the one who's offering, uh, where they can run your application uh, via standalone, okay, it doesn't require uh, a person who's going to maintain that application. So when it comes to uh, update, when it comes to uh, maintenance. So you have nothing to think about it anymore, okay? Since it's a standalone application. So SaaS is a go-go for you. So SaaS is uh, uh, reliable, okay? As long as uh, you know someone who's going to create that application for you, okay? So like, for example, developer that will be coming from PaaS. Okay, so they're the ones going to uh, develop. And then of course, you as a uh, person who availed this uh, service, then uh, you're going to buy that one, that standalone application, and then implement uh, that one into this uh, service, okay, this SaaS right here. So yeah, that's basically the differences of those three. So how many minutes do we have more? So four more minutes. Okay, so let's have a few more slides. So uh, ES or IS is infrastructure, infrastructure as a Service. So it is a cloud service that provides basic computing infrastructure. Okay, so this is also a pay for what you use model. So it also, uh, uh, this one also it provided includes Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, uh, Google Compute Engine. Well, actually there's more, okay. So this one is just the one that is uh, being listed in here, but it's not limited to these uh, three big companies. So you can have the other uh, services also that, that is coming from uh, other companies. So the users of this one is IT administrators only. So we could say that this is for admins only. Yes. So here are the products that, uh, uh, you know, that's being offered on the 
uh, internet right now. So you can have the EC2, which is coming from the EWS, okay, or the Microsoft Azure. So you can also have this one. So this is also a big company, so Microsoft. And uh, GoGrid. Okay, so we have uh, a lot more uh, products and services. So yeah, just try to search uh, them on the internet. But here are the uh, most common or most widely known when it comes to uh, EAS products and services. So the next one is PaaS. So this one is um, uh, provides cloud platforms and runtime -time environments for developing, testing, and managing applications. Okay, so it allows uh, software developers to deploy applications without requiring all the related infrastructure. Okay, so the only one who uses one is software developers. So, you know, it's like this one is really specifically made for uh, people who's developing a software okay, or who's developing a game, okay, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, anything that uh, needs in development, especially in software. So you all, they always avail at uh, this one pass. So here are the uh, products and services. So we have the EBS, which is again, coming from uh, Amazon Web Services. Okay, we also have the Google App Engine or the Microsoft Azure. So one thing that uh, you know is quite ambiguous with uh, Microsoft Azure is they, they just keep on saying Microsoft Azure in here. So there should be a uh, category for that one. Like in Amazon, we have EC2 for ES, EBS for uh, PaaS, but in Microsoft Azure, it's still Microsoft Azure, okay? So uh, yeah, anyway. And then for the SaaS, so here are the common applications that we are using. So this is a cloud provider's cost and manage a software application on a pay as you go pricing model. So depending on the uh, you know, speed that you're going to build, depending on the storage that you're going to build, okay, it's also uh, applicable in SaaS. So all software and hardware are provided and managed by a vendor so you don't have to maintain anything. So the one that was using this one now is the end customers. So we people is always accessing a SaaS products, okay? Like the uh, Microsoft products, the Google uh, applications that we can find on a, a, web browser, a web browser, okay? So that's it for the uh, SaaS. Okay, so since we don't have enough time anymore, we'll stop here for now and then we'll just continue the rest on the part two. Okay, so goodbye for now and see you guys later on.